uh, to navigate the human race. Uh, certainly, as I say again, your government is so involved in ways that it couldn't possibly understand with it. And uh, th- uh, that is the key to understanding who the third party is that they're speaking to. They're speaking to a human group. They're speaking to a covert okay. group of some description. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share uh, your, your photos that you gave me, because I do have them here. Yeah. And uh, you'll see them here on the screen between us. Uh, and, and then you can also tell me, because I've got them in a line here, so I'm going to try to, uh, to navigate uh, from one to the other. And uh, let me just show you uh, that, I, that all of them, so you, you can see which ones I have. Yeah, and, great. Uh, and That's great. That's great. That's that, the, yeah. um, now, can, do you want me to focus on any one of these? To yeah, explain? focus on the, on the drawing with the triangles, Kerry, if you would. All right. So, so what happens is, is that there is a, in Russia, there was an interview given to Pravda by a Russian general called Alexei Yusavin, who indicated that he had a very special unit of remote viewers that was looking at this kind of scenario of contact with extraterrestrials. And he said that 90% of the time, the contactee or experienced uh, what would happen is uh, uh, Alexei Yusavin indicated to the Russian media that 90% of the time, the contactee experiencer uh, will have interaction with female uh, aliens. 10%, it's a rarity that you will have contact with a male UFO occupant. But on the morning uh, in May 2014, I was due to film with a UK broadcaster outside a prestigious London's, uh, London uh, Institute that deals with the affairs, deals with big affairs of state and all this kind of thing. We were due to film outside there and before I uh, went there I was awoken, well I saw this vision in sleep. Uh, the illustrator Lloyd Canning's done a marvellous job of two triangles coming in over a field uh, and two clocks. The first clock says quarter to midnight and the second clock says five to midnight. It was at the height of the Ukraine crisis and this guy was speaking to somebody. Like I'm speaking to you now, Kerry, you can see me on camera. If you could imagine him not being human, like I am now with the boom mic, but he didn't have a boom mic on, speaking to someone without any volume and then going out the dream again as if nothing had happened. But he was speaking to someone. That's the big thing. He was speaking to someone. Um, If you can still hear me, what is interesting is you will see the drawing of a plane coming over my house. Uh, It's kind of like, what's that one? It's image four. I've got it as image. That's the one. Now, that there was taken the other night. That's a Hercules C-130, which is attached to 9th Army Air Corps in the UK. What is interesting about that C-130 is that it's on manoeuvres. It's actually on operational manoeuvres, but he's paying particular attention and circling the field in question where those two triangles are or where they might appear. So the drawing that you've just shown the listeners is of the two triangles coming in over the field and that Hercules C-130 circulated that field 11 times and did a routine uh, combat training exercise of landing and taking off rapidly again in that area. What is interesting about that C-130 is that it has an army reconnaissance flash on it. It is reconnaissance. It's recon. It's a uh, reconnaissance uh, aircraft. could be a routine maneuver, but it was paying particular attention to that field. And for a number of weeks, jets over that area of where, those, where I indicate those triangles are, jets would, uh, would be flying in over that area, typhoon fighters continually flying over that area, doing high-level aerial dogfights. So... On the scenario, we we are expecting something. If you go to image two, the UFO's image two JPEG, I think that is, you'll see that the Hercules is doing his um, is doing his combat maneuver training. What he's going to do, this Hercules here, uh, that's image two. It's a picture of the Hercules. Um, I think we're on, I've got it here as image two. That's the one, Kelly. Well done. Excellent. Yeah. Image two. Uh, and what's happening there is the Hercules is on approach to a place called Burn Aerodrome. It's going to do some tactical uh, landing maneuvers. So what a C-130 does, it can take off and land at high speed in a short space of time on a very rapid descent and a very rapid ascent. It can do all that. But in the background, as we can see there, is uh, the UFOs in the background. Uh, and those UFOs are closely monitoring what's what's going on. And they are, in sense of direction as to where that plane is, they are roughly in the area where that drawing that we saw listeners are. So something is going going on, Kerry, but we just can't quite put our um, our finger on it. As you can see, the plane circled uh, my house uh, and on a number of occasions. If we look at image uh, two, this is of absolute fascination to your listeners. Uh, is image? I think that's image two. 
or image free is it with the with the UFO? I think it's image free. Actually, if yeah, that's the one. Yeah, well done, excellent. Okay, this was taken at the uh, Lindisfarne Festival near Hurley Island in Newcastle, in the United Kingdom. I'm just about to give a talk about UFOs to the festival goers, and my iPhone 5 takes a photo of uh, one of them, as you can see. A few weeks before that happened, they did indicate to me that they were uh, they are a particular group that we would know as the Illuminous ones. They are their technology, their biology, where they come from, God only knows, but they're very different to human beings in biology. And they have indicated to us that they have been um, monitoring us since World War II. What is tragic about that is that in the area of Vietnam and Asia, a lot of them appear to be getting shot down of that type of UFO. Um, I'm not sure what the connection is between them being there and watching me. I'm definitely sure there's a connection with blonde ones. But Jason Gleaves here in the UK uh, and and you know of Spiritual Horizons, uh, he's XRAF. Uh, he analysed X Royal Air Force and he analysed these images and it clearly shows um, the UFO uh, in in presence there. So we know that there's something going on, we know that there's some sort of warning and I know that they are speaking to someone, uh, a third party that is human, that is probably a bit more smarter and clued up than I am on all this. Yeah, that's nice Kerry, and as you can see there, Jason's done an excellent job in just highlighting the object coming in. Later on, on that Saturday evening, uh, we went up to Hurley Island near Newcastle and we were buzzed seven times by it. Seven times it came, it flew over us, it, it, it came to a very illuminous, it went very white in colour, opened up to say hello and went off again and it passed the, the people I was with about seven times on that evening to say hello to us and that's uh, as you can see Kerry, yeah there you go and there it is, that's a very nice shot of it in the clouds there just overlooking me uh, as I took a photo on my phone, I didn't even realise I'd seen it until uh, Jason pointed it out to me and I think you'll find if you go to image one you'll see the C-130 just coming in on its approach to do its uh, to do its manoeuvres, to do its military manoeuvre, and as you can see, the, the two dots are in the background there, which are uh, UFOs, uh, identified as unidentified flying objects that are just watching. Because, Kerry, uh, we have a situation developing in that area with UFOs uh, and the UK. Now, I don't know what the link is, uh, but there's been some hair-raising things uh, going on. Um, okay, I just don't now, know what uh, the link is. Actually, I'm going to interrupt you here because I'd like you to, to explain, and I know we have a bit of an echo, so I don't know if you know where your mute button is on this screen, right. but it's at the top. If you mute yourself while I talk and then I have to mute myself while you talk, it uh, seems to eliminate our echo issue. At any rate, what I wanted to ask you is initially you had mentioned uh, this drawing, and this drawing, uh, I first of all, I'd like to know who drew it. And second of all, are you saying that this is uh, actually something that happened in your dream? In other words, you said that there was a man who was on some kind of communication device talking to what appeared to be, if I understand it correctly, two UFOs, that you saw this in your sort of vision or whatever, and then uh, somehow did you ask a friend to draw this? Uh, what was the... What was the procedure there? And I'm going to mute myself so you can talk. Okay, Kenny. Well, the procedure there was uh, this was a vision that, that came in May uh, due to me uh, before I went up to London for the afternoon to film with the broadcaster Channel 4 outside a place called the Royal Institute of International Affairs. It is uh, rumoured, although I have no idea whether this is correct or not, that some contactees, they take an interest in this kind of thing. Um, and what happened was I was asleep at the time, as clear as day, these two UFOs came in uh, as I was sleeping, as if in a dream, but it was more clearly than a dream. It was definitely them, their unmistakable art, their iconography. It was definitely the, the blondes. And a man, and that is all I can describe him has, looks similar to me on the, on the microphone, as we can see, but blonde, blue-eyed, very real, was mouthing something to somebody speaking speaking as if the sound was turned off, as if he'd been muted so that I couldn't hear what he was saying, but somebody else could. And they drew two clocks, two giant clocks, and they gave emphasis to the one pointing at five to midnight. Emphasis, massive emphasis on the one pointing at five to midnight at the height of the Ukraine crisis, uh, because our governments are aware that, there is, that they're there. Okay, who drew this? Uh, 
the, this is the excellent work of Lloyd Canning. He's an illustrator in the UK who, who does fantastic artwork to do with UFOs uh, and he does illustrations for me. He's currently working on another one which is to do with a vision from future Earth time which, uh, which will be fascinating once we get the result from him. Uh, which is a story in itself, uh, but it is to do, uh, this one here in particular is the vision that I had and that was done by Lloyd Canning here in the UK. All right, thank you for that. Uh, so in terms of these other pictures, uh, when you say you, you saw this, are these the same UFO, the one in, let's see, slide, what, what you've got. slide one, slide two, Yep. And then slide three. Are those all the same no. UFO in your opinion or not? Uh, it, is it the same incident, let's say? Uh, what did, oh, hang on. So, hello? Oh, Kerry, hello. Yes. Hello. You, what you've got there is a scenario. I'm feeding back again. That's but what you've got there is a scenario where, for some reason, um, in simplest terms, you have the intergalactic equivalent of NATO taking an interest in the, in our skies. I know that sounds odd, but it's the only way that I can um, I can put it. I think that they are connected, but for reasons I know why, I'm not sure. Um, at the moment, what you've got there is the, the image one, I think that's image uh, three, was taken over Newcastle near Holy Island in Berwick, which is a very sacred place. Uh, yes, and the other one was taken only the other evening. Uh, the Hercules uh, issue, uh, I think that happened on Tuesday night of this week. Uh, it's now Friday, isn't it? So Tuesday night of this week, I think that happened uh, with the Hercules. And the, yes, they could well be the same UFO um, that is monitoring, or they might not be. I'm not sure on that. Uh, there's certainly a liaison going on. There's a liaison going on with these UFOs and somebody else, uh, and that's the mysterious part of it. Nobody, Kerry, seems to be letting me know the full extent of information as to why this is going on, which is something I've got to live with. Okay, uh, so in essence, you're kind of an observer. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And, you're, and you're documenting this. Uh, you're yeah. on, on the scene, uh, and, and one would wonder if you're actually being notified ahead of time to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. It's it's a simple, uh, Kerry, uh, you know, it's, it's a simple situation of whereby I don't need to stand there and expect them. They'll just tell me when they're turning up and I'll probably film them. Uh, that such is the liaison uh, with them. Um, so, yeah, it is a case of being in the right place at the right time. Uh, perhaps it's a case of uh, seeing in the future as well as to where we're going with things. Uh, I'm not too sure, really. I just can't put my finger on the why, Kerry. I know the who. I don't know the why. And I know the landscape, but I still don't know the why. Uh, and that, for me, is very, very uh, sad in some ways, because I may go to the grave, Kerry, not knowing. I may, I may end up departing and going into the next life, because it may be that these experiences actually kick into the next life. They don't just do things on a single time frame. It spans an evolutionary time span with them. Uh, so I may move into the next life uh, with still these experiences chasing my ass, uh, which is disturbing, I find. Okay. But at this time, uh, we're going to sort of look for questions from the audience. We've been going for a while here. And also, so if you have questions and you are able to do so, please put the questions into the chat and uh, for Tony and for myself. And then at the same time, uh, Tony, what I'd like to do is, is find out, you're showing us pictures that are very recent for you, and I'm wondering uh, what you, uh, what is how, where's your head at now, uh, where you think you're going with, with things in your life, and um, has this become uh, the dominant theme of your life at this time? Or it is, do you yeah. have another job? Uh, are you able no. to keep yourself going, etc.? Okay. okay, these are these are good questions, Kerry. Uh, they're good questions, and they're essential questions as well. Uh, and that's always a good thing. Uh, I would um, I would suggest that I'm a broken man uh, with it all. Uh, there are some people who stand on four legs. I'm currently balancing on two. Uh, my life is one great big juggling act. If it wasn't for the friends that I've got around me, uh, I don't know where I'd be. I am involved in other in other things, uh, but I enjoy. Uh, I'm lucky. 
I'm very lucky indeed here in the UK just to earn a very small micro living from the talks that I do uh, and I'm very lucky to have that platform uh, but the talks are evolving all the time and uh, I'm, I'm broken. I wouldn't say I'm beyond repair, but I am broken, Gary, because of it all. Uh, and that's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. I'm just, just broken, frankly, with it. Traumatized and broken. Okay, let me ask you something. Uh, I don't. Do you have children? No. Okay. So do you have family members or other people close to you who are also experiencing uh, some of these things? Uh, yes, uh, there are friends that are experiencing this. Uh, my mother did experience these things in the past, uh, but the, currently, um, at the moment, Kerry, uh, there's only me, myself, and I really involved with it all. Uh, and I find that for some reason, though, I'm staying, I'm staying on top of it. But it's one big, one big juggling act. It, uh, it really is. Um, and what is interesting, Kerry, is the fact that these people over the years uh, were stalking me for a child. They wanted a child from me uh, for reasons I do not understand. Don't get it. Genuinely don't get it. Uh, uh, okay. uh, um, just hold on one second. Uh, well, I guess you can hear me. So, uh, wondering why you why you think that? In other words, what made it clear that they wanted a child from you, and who are yeah. you talking when you say they? Okay, okay. Well, well, we're talking the people who uh, I'm feeding back. Oh, excellent. Um, we're talking about the people who targeted me. Uh, there is an ulterior esoteric motive behind what went on, and they were targeting me for some reason because of the want of a child. I do not know, Kerry, uh, why they wanted a child. I'm not married. I'm currently a single man. I've been single for a very long time, but they wanted a child. The only thing I could think of is that a child of mine would be able to see in higher spatial dimension, would be able to see in a, in a continuum way, in a fourth dimensional way perhaps, uh, would be very unique. And uh, that's probably why they wanted it. I would hazard a guess. It would be able to see into the environment that I can see. Uh, no child of mine will be subjected uh, to that environment at all. Uh, I will not have it and will not stand for it. There's a distinct possibility that one of these groups already has uh, one of my children. That's a possibility because I'm probably a unique old bird, as we say. Um, but still, Kerry, the why eludes me, and it would be wrong to say to your listeners that I knew why, because I don't. I don't know why this is happening. Well, you know I mean, I, I understand that you, you feel that you don't know why, but it, in, a, in a more general sense, esoterically speaking, uh, certainly you are having a spiritual uh, awakening within your awareness, and uh, this is all part of the encounter. In other words, as a being becomes... Uh, more sensitive, more awakened, you tap into other worlds, you tap into other beings, you are communicating. We are all doing this. Uh, it's just that many people are not aware of it. They simply don't know they're doing it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, you, on, on the ca other case, are, are, are aware of it. Hi you're actually sort of the other extreme, the hyper-aware. And uh, therefore, you kind of talk about it probably constantly in your everyday life. I don't know. I'm just guessing. And, uh, and and it has dominated your life consequently so uh, so this this is a, a path to spiritual awareness to enlightenment this is all fair uh, you know fair and good and all's fair in <laughs> love and war as they say in this in this kind of way um, the other thing that seems to be happening is that we have a various beings in case you don't know it including, a large portion of the higher level of humanity, uh, I don't mean they're high on a spiritual basis, but I mean they're uh, in the higher, uh, higher uh, realms of power, who are um, looking to create a humanity 3.0, as we call them, uh, another step up from humanity who will bring in uh, these, the, beyond the indigo children, but certainly the indigos are part of it, and, uh, and, and so getting children from uh, what are experiencers who have a genetic line, and you will be part of a genetic line, and therefore you're targeted in this way. Right. And you, as yeah. you say, your mother had contact. It's, it usually does go in families. So they are, are motivated. In fact, certain of these may have already taken, uh, I guess, sperm from you, and then you may already have children. Uh, you may not be aware of it, but that's often the case. 
It is, uh, it is often the case, uh, Kerry, and that has happened. And in fact, we've also got parallel universes as well, which is something that we have with as a contact team. We do have them. Uh, they are there, parallel futures, um, parallel timelines. It all happens for the real deal contact team experience, uh, and they end up having, uh, are overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed with sensory input from these other realms and other realms, and they, and they just cannot seem to, to shut it down. If it wasn't for the grace in God, I think uh, I wouldn't be here to tell the tale. But I am here to tell the tale, and it must benefit somebody somewhere a great deal. Um, I do feel it's um, it's hard work, Kerry, and it's uh, it's not easy at all. But yes, I am probably a rare genetic bloodline, definitely so, very rare indeed. I would think, which is probably why we're getting the level of targeting that I've been getting, definitely so. Okay, well, uh, along those lines, why do you think you're a rare genetic bloodline? Uh, is there something in your family history that makes you say that? Possibly so. Uh, there's a possibility that we are linked somehow along the way to rare, a rare royal genetic bloodline, but I'm not too sure on it. But there could be a link to that because of the level of targeting that I'm uh, that I'm getting. We may have an ancestral link down the line, somewhere down the line to something very ancient and kingly that I'm not aware of, uh, which is also another key as to why I was getting the level of stuff coming at me that I was, uh, because it's like holding a deck of cards. You have no idea of the deck of cards that you're holding. Uh, but everybody else does, uh, which is not a very nice situation to be in, Kerry. Not a nice one. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. So uh, we actually have uh, one question here, and okay. someone is asking you what happened at 4 a.m. Uh, right, yeah, okay, what happened at 4 a.m.? Uh, there was a, a presence over the house again of the uh, Nordic type blue people uh, who just uh, came in over the house uh, but didn't tell me why they were present but it was it was possibly to do uh, with, uh, with my own protection. It was to do possibly with a protection issue uh, because uh, I'm exposed to a continuum, a space-time continuum, which they are familiar with um, and it was possibly to do with activities there but I'm not sure, Kerry, and I'm not going to say that I know when I don't know because it's inaccurate for your listeners, but they were there. It was them, uh, and there was no doubt in my mind that it was them. And they just appeared, uh, just to check in. They'll do this with me uh, once a week. They will check in with me to see if I'm all right and go on their merry way again. Um, for reasons, okay. Are you I'm not seeing, sure. Uh, when you say they check in, how did they check in? Uh, did you see a, a craft? Okay, uh, it's, it's comical. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting, Kelly. It's quite comical what they do because they're a comical lot. It's not all heavy going. Uh, it can be quite hilarious with them. But what they will do is they have characteristic uh, iconography, uh, which is very Mayan in a way. And uh, when I sleep, uh, you will the proof of the pudding will be when they come over the house and I literally film them but that's another story uh, but when I sleep uh, we will see my whole awareness uh, move and shift as if I'm in an aircraft of some description uh, which isn't an aircraft but it has a very gentle and graceful hum to it and you'll hear the hover and then you'll hear them come in uh, you'll hear that you'll see the blonde distinctive blue eyed features of them and you'll hear one of them go like that as if to say just be quiet a moment we don't want people knowing that we're just here but we are they will do what they need to do whatever that is and then they will be on their way again sometimes they will play music uh, the most appropriate themed music to what I'm feeling at the time because they as bizarre as it seems have studied the affairs of earth so they know music um, which has been quite hilarious uh, but they're very respectful people they're, they're very respectful when their craft come over they seem to be very respectful that they're in my country's airspace they're very respectful of what is going on, very respectful of uh, affairs uh, that are happening in, in our world, and are strangers in a stranger's land, Kerry, which is bizarre, but I did have an incident where they were, they, f they gave the conveyed the meaning to me that they were uh, strangers uh, in a stranger's land when they flew over, um, which is interesting, and certainly is and continues and continues to its whatever end game it's going to be, Kerry. Okay, okay, very good. So, can you tell me, uh, you're, you're certainly aware of these goings on. Would you also say that your psychic ability or telepathic ability has increased over time? Yes, it, yes, it has uh, in ways that are um, certainly um, very powerful or have been very powerful, and that's not necessarily been a good thing. Uh, it's something that I really... It's not that I don't want to talk about it, but I just find it, it's just not been a bit, it's just, I don't get it. Uh, I know that there's something connected with that going on with my experiences. Uh, and yes, the, the psychic functioning is generated, Kerry, into more of a cosmic awareness, uh, an evolutionary cosmic awareness. The Egyptians, you know, with, with this, when they were doing that, the cosmic kind of awareness uh, is what we've all forgotten. 
Uh, although looking at you, you have the look of a woman who is aware of this, uh, which you are. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it's true that we've forgotten that cosmic ordering of who we are. And some of us have leaped to genetic evolutionary fence and become aware of it uh, in a world that is um, tearing itself apart. I do believe so. There is a spiritual component to these experiences, a very deep one as well, uh, as I'm sure you will appreciate, as you do appreciate. You know this, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, that's uh, that's great to hear to hear you talk like that and to hear uh, what's happening with you. So it's been a long saga, obviously, for you, Tony, and you've been through a lot. But I I do think that uh, you have benefited, and uh, and and I think maybe even more so in the future. So so yes. I'd love like to to have another interview with you in the future. Thank you, Kerry. This is great, Kerry. Yeah, and and thank you for your uh, line of questioning, which has been very good. Um, you know, and as, as, as to get more out of me rather than to uh, oppress me or make fun of me, your line of questioning has, uh, has probably aided the listeners and certainly aided me uh, because our contactees, like ourselves, are traumatised, we're exhausted, and sometimes we just sometimes just. Sometimes when we're trying to explain something, we can't quite get it out correctly. So I think your style of interview has been a great aid to me in just trying to get it, get the deeper elements uh, of my story within the public domain. Yes, so I thank you very much for that, and thank you to your listeners as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, now I want to ask you just a few last questions, and if there again, if there, we have some live listeners, anyone wants to put a question in the chat uh, in, and is able to do so, I think it's on Google Plus. Uh, then please do. Uh, now, what about artificial intelligence? Uh, you did talk about communicating with a craft very recently, uh, the communication with a uh, basically a craft that is, is conscious, as you called it. Are you aware of the artificial intelligence here on the planet, uh, the various aspects of it, the black goo, the other stories, uh, uh, I, and, and yeah. so on? Are you interacting with it? Are you aware of it? Uh, I'm I'm aware that there is a, a greater cosmic intelligence, uh, Kerry, uh, out there, but that doesn't answer your question. Uh, I'm not as aware as I should be uh, of that situation. I need to fully read up on it. Uh, it was a staggering experience because the craft in general was querying, uh, the intelligence of the quest was querying the greater universe around it with some fascination, uh, and that's all I can and describe it of. Uh, it's as if that they, this culture that I'm dealing with us grasp the role of artificial intelligence that is ad more advanced than we would uh, at the moment the world of artificial intelligence seems to have a corporate element to it that is a bit sinister there's some sinister goings on with it I uh, I don't like it and I think you will find that the guys in the military who have liaison with the UFOs the real McCoy guys will probably tell you that uh, it will be with these if they're communicating with them never military information is given with them it's always medical information uh, they will never give us the the military, and I don't want to know. I wouldn't want to know about the military capabilities of such a craft and what it could do. But it, all I can say, Kerry, is that it was a fascinating and incredible moment. And I knew the craft was over the house. Uh, it was like something out of Star Trek. It was cloaked and it spoke. It literally spoke to me. And it, it was... It was wild, absolutely wild, um, and I was privileged. And it was, it, as I say, it was, this craft was intelligent. It was aware. It was querying the greater world around it. Okay. Well, let me let me just say here that Mark Richards, Captain Mark Richards, and I don't know if you've ever seen my interviews uh, that you know they're actually interview recalls mm -hmm. because he's in prison. But he talked about a, a spacecraft called Minerva. Mm -hmm. that he was actually one of the few people in the entire secret space program who could communicate with this craft mm -hmm. and, uh, and fly God. her and fly her. Good and God. It, it would seem that you are uh, a, such a, a person Good God. who may be growing into that same capability. You grasped, grasped it, Kerry. It. Mm, you've grasped it, yeah. You, that's what. That's exactly what. And it was at the instigation of probably this man who I keep saying that he's just he's just having a little tinker with it just to see what will happen. Um, and it was. I can only describe it as just as just fascinating. But I'm in October speaking in Watford, where Joanne Richards is speaking. So that will be absolutely incredible uh, to 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 undergo that story. Uh, it really will. It's coming up to quarter to eleven UK time here. I'm staying in a family's house who are up no, early in the morning. Uh, they have to be up at four, and uh, they're just wondering if they could maybe get things moving at this end. Uh, you know, yes, yes. 
Uh, they're not into this, by the way, in any way, but their support is tremendous. They're, they're great friends and their support. Okay, is yes, great. absolutely. And thank you so much, Tony Topping. And I really appreciate your time. Uh, I'm very happy we were able to get together today to talk about very, these things. Very good, uh, yes. And uh, let's do it again. Please Les, it's been a blast. Uh, I know that you're going to benefit from meeting Joanne Richards. She's a delight. And she is speaking at High Elms Manor, where I spoke uh, when I was in the UK about a month ago, a little over right. a month ago. Right. And uh, it's a wonderful venue, uh, very nice, uh, very, very great kind of quiet place to, to have a meeting. And it uh, does attract quite a large crowd, as it happens. I'm hoping the two of you will, uh, you know, Joanna and, and yourself, when you speak, will have uh, a good crowd over there. Uh, wonderful people. Uh, you may even see Miles Johnston if he gets interested in, and comes on down. Uh, he, he can be a great uh, asset to have in the audience. And, uh, and, and at any rate, it, it's great to talk to you. Uh, and I think that you're going down a very interesting road. I'm, I'm happy that you shared your experiences with us, and we will revisit this in the future, okay? Oh, yeah, we will, Kerry. So, well, I'll keep you posted, keep your emails, keep the pictures coming, and so on and so forth, and you can share them with your listeners and so on, and we'll do it again, definitely. Thank you very much. It's been worth the 15-year wait. <laughs> okay, all right. Take care. All right. Thank all you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.